picking up from the last episode about art direction, I want to talk a little bit about specifically the art direction of character design. So let's go. If you're doing any kind of art direction for a tabletop game, most likely the most frequent art direction you're going to have to give is the standalone character that is on a transparent background that you can kind of plop in different places for marketing materials or in the rule book or what have you in cards. When I'm writing art direction for a new character design, usually it's a signature character for that game project. Uh, it's usually going to be the main heroes or even the main villains uh, of the game's world. And in doing so, they really convey a lot about what that world looks like and how it feels to the players. It gives the players an avatar into that world to express themselves and also to experience uh, the game's themes on their own. When you're writing the art direction for a new character design, there are a list of questions that I find very useful to uh, keep in mind as I tell the artist what to draw. As you talk about each character, think about how are they posed? Why are they in this pose? What are they wearing? What are they holding in their hands, like props or tools or weapons? What are they feeling? Are they pensive? Are they afraid? Are they courageous? Are they angry? And what are they looking at? Are they looking straight at the camera? Uh, that is you, the viewer. Uh, and if so, is it with an accusatory tone? Uh, or are they being friendly towards you? Are they looking off to the side? Uh, and if so, even if we don't see it, uh, and even if you don't do anything in the art to show what it is they're looking at, it's still I think relevant for the artist to know what it is they're meant to be looking at, particularly for eye lines. Like if they're looking at a giant, for example, it's important to have the eye lines be looking straight up, for example. Um, and I think those details are things that you need to ask yourself as you write your art direction so that when you deliver that art direction document to the artist, they have a very fleshed out picture of what it is that you actually want. One, negative space. Negative space is the space that is between a limb and the rest of the body. And you wanna make as many negative spaces as you can. Not go crazy with it, but be, be mindful of how you're using that as a tool so you can kind of do this whole thing. Next up, foreshortening. Foreshortening is when one part of the body is really far ahead of the rest of the body. So you get this huge ginormous hand right in front of the uh, character. Now you got to be very careful about where this hand goes because the closer it gets to the head, the weirder it kind of looks and you, you get these weird situations where there's overlapping elements in the foreground and the background that don't quite work out. But this sort of thing is great for an action shot with a punch that goes like right about here. But you still, again, have some clear negative space between that fist and that head a little bit. Enough so that the negative space creates definition around that fist. Next up, avoid the coffin. Uh, now, the coffin is something that uh, I call it, but uh, I'm sure other people have other terms for it. But the coffin is basically where you draw a box around the character, and typically there's not a lot of empty space between the edges of that box and the body. So if the body is just like this stiff and straight ahead and you drew a box around me, uh, there wouldn't be a lot of like empty space here. It's pretty compact, like a coffin. Now, if you can draw a box around the pose, uh, say, leaning forward or off to the side, or you stick one limb out and suddenly that box has to expand in order to accommodate that extra space, that usually means that you have a more interesting and dynamic pose. Now, even if your character design is on a transparent background, there are environmental things that you can still take into account as part of the pose. The main thing, of course, is lighting. Where is the light source being cast? From, from behind this character? Or is it maybe from below and you kind of create this spooky effect? Maybe it's off to the side and you have this sort of noir, like light and dark interplay that doesn't really have much uh, shading in between. And what color is that light? Is it red? Is it blue? Is it warm? Is it cold? Is it from above casting long shadows? Or is it from far away casting very, very soft shading? What if the character is holding their own light source? If they're carrying a flashlight or carrying a lighter up to their face like this, other environmental effects, of course, include rain, moisture, wind. Uh, are, are they dry? Are they in a humid environment? Are they in a hot environment? Are they outside or are they indoors? 
even if your character is part of some fantasy world and they're not realistic at all, these little touches and considerations can still add a sense of verisimilitude to your character design that I think most viewers will appreciate. These are things that can add additional texture to your character pose and is something that I think is often overlooked when you're creating a new character design. So all of these questions are very much the beginning of our direction. The next step is to think about the details of what that character looks like in terms of their body type. Uh, how tall are they? How uh, heavy set are they? Uh, are they typically able-bodied? Uh, and what ethnicity are they? Uh, what kind of hair do they have? Do they got a big nose like I do, for example? Uh, do their ears stick out a little bit? Uh, these odd details that if you don't have something in mind and convey that at least a little bit to the artist, you're kind of abdicating responsibility in your role as art director. There are some weird tricks that I've used to make that process a little bit easier for me. Uh, say, for example, in Trickster Champions of Time, I made a spreadsheet uh, where every row was a different character. And I divided up uh, that number of characters by uh, different uh, ethnicities and body types and gender expression uh, and made each of those variables a different column. And I divided up all of the characters roughly equally for all of these different dimensions. Uh, and then all I did was randomize each of those columns so that every single character was a different random permutation of ethnicity and gender expression, uh, body type, age is a big one. And as an art director, you really got to keep everything in mind uh, and, and be aware that a lot of different people are playing your games and if they see themselves as heroes in those games, oh gosh, you're going to have a fan for life. If you can't answer these really fundamental questions about character design, then you have to go back to the drawing board and evaluate what is the purpose of this particular piece? What is it meant to convey? Uh, does it say much about the character? The worst case scenario is where you get problems like male gaze, where a character is really drawn specifically for the titillation of the presumably male heterosexual viewer. And sometimes you even get uh, prejudices and racial biases that you as the art director or as the artist never really questioned about yourself, but you just happen to draw a lot of white characters, you happen to draw a lot of male characters, just because that's your default and you have no art direction that's telling you to, to even try anything different. And in the absence of art direction, most people will restore back to a default. And Unfortunately, that default is heavily influenced by what pop culture has presented before for what that character type is meant to look like. You have to be mindful of that influence in your own work, whether you're the art director or the artist. So I would recommend to you, as the new art director, take your role with a sense of responsibility and sobriety and solemnity, but also fun. It's honestly just fun to have this job where you can tell an artist, hey, I want to see this thing. It's a great job. I love it. I do it every day and it's really my passion. So um, thank you for letting me share it with you uh, briefly and uh, hopefully you found this somewhat useful. Thanks very much for watching. Please feel free to ask any layout or graphic design questions you have in the comments below and I'll try to make a new video about them. Thank you very much. Bye! Bye.